What's up, everybody? Happy Monday. I hope all you're having a great day so far. hope you had a wonderful weekend. First of all, it is like 74 degrees right now, I want to say. 73, 74, somewhere around here. I think it's supposed to be 80 degrees today. If you know me long enough, then you know I cannot stand the summer. <laughs> I don't like the summer because of the damn heat. I'm more of a spring, fall kind of person. I love spring and fall. Fall, I kind of love because it's that good little weather with the nice colors and stuff and the leaves and all that. I love it, you know, because the leaves and the color, you know, the color and the leaves change. Spring is a good mix of weather because you can wear a short sleeve, long sleeve. You can wear a little jacket if you want to, or you can go short sleeve if you want. It's that in between, that in between weather. I love it. Summer, no can do. It's no, I, it's a no for me. So you probably gonna hear me all summer long complain about this heat. <laughs> you probably will, but I'm gonna try to keep it to a minimum. Um, getting into this episode of GH, this episode today and Friday's episode just solidifies why I love this time of year with the nurses ball. I love nurses ball time. I love it. The performances, the shade, the drama. The, the fun scenes, like I just love it. It brings everybody together. Because I told everybody, I told some people in the comments, because I know everybody on Friday was wondering where Bobby was. They were wondering where Alexis and Neil were. That's what I'm saying. The first episode of the Nurses Ball is all red carpet. So you're not going to see everybody. You know what I mean? You're going to see a select few of people. Monday's episode, today, the second day of the Nurses Ball, that's when you start to see everybody. You know, everybody start to come in like Alexis and Bobby and all. You know what I'm saying? So that's why I tell people, trust me, you're going to see Bobby. You're going to see, of course, Alexis was going to be there because she's there every year. So, you know, just be a little patient. Um, But that opening number, the nurses did. I loved it. I love it. I love it. I wasn't expecting them to sing that song, though, but I love it. They killed it. Epiphany, Deanna, Nurse Amy. Nurse Amy was lit. I loved it. Nurse Amy blew it away. Felix, that little Soul Train line that they did. I freaking, I was, I was, I was here for it. I was here for the whole thing. They killed it. The nurses did their thing. I was wanting to see Elizabeth be a part of it. I, I Elizabeth wasn't there. She wasn't a part of it. Actually, we didn't see Liz this whole episode. I'm like. Where the heck was Elizabeth and Franco? We know that they're there, but I'm like, where are they? I didn't. I don't remember seeing them this whole episode. Um, I I don't believe I did. I might have to recheck it, but I don't think I seen them. I'm like, so where the heck was Elizabeth and Franco? We know that they're there because we saw them on Friday at the red carpet, and Franco got them a limo. So I'm like, okay, where the heck are they? Um, Bobby, of course, was a part of the number and stuff. Epiphany, oh my, God, I love it. I freaking loved it. They killed it. They, 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 oh my God, they tore that stage up. I was here for it. I was dancing with them. I was snapping my fingers, dancing right along with them. I was, I was here for it. Like that song and the way that they did it, it makes you want to move. Um, and it made me even more hot. <laughs> like, <laughs> cause you be all out of breath and stuff trying to keep up with them. I'm like, yeah, I can't. Let me stop. I was like, I can't do this. Um, <laughs> so anyway. Listen, I'm here for Scott being a friend to Ava and stuff like that. And I think he is a good friend trying to look out for her and stuff. But Scott, that whole plan that you and Lucy had was so childish. It was fun, but it was childish. I was like, come on now. Y'all know Ava is a big girl. She could take care of herself. Yeah, she got played for a little minute by Ryan. But you know that ain't going to happen again. We know that. And the only reason she even got played by Ryan was because she didn't know his history. Two... Um, her daughter had was murdered, so her mind was just she wasn't in her right mind. You know what I mean? She wasn't thinking clear. She wasn't none of that. Because trust me, if she was thinking clear and in her right frame of mind, she wouldn't have let that man play her like that. Because we know Ava. Ava's a big girl. She could take care of herself. Um, but we all know Ryan is in the house. We know Ryan gonna be at that ball. I seen a picture, I think on Twitter, and it looked like it was Ryan peeling back the curtain. I was like, look at Ryan. I could tell that little devilish looking facial expression he'd be having. So I know that was him. I said, look at this devil. <laughs> so I knew he was going to be there. Um, so anyway, I did like the scene with um, 
Christina and Jocelyn sitting on the couch watching movies and eating popcorn and stuff. I like how Christina was there. You know, like Christina and Jocelyn may not be biological siblings and stuff, but I love how Christina considers Jocelyn a sister, even though they're stepsisters. I love how she, you know, was willing to stay there, you know, and just chill and watch TV with her, keep her company so that way she ain't by herself. And, you know, they was watching movies, sitting on their phone, looking at Twitter or social media, looking at their family on the red carpet. And that's when Christina, of course, saw Sam and Shiloh on the red carpet and Christina was pissed. I'm loving this version of Christina. I'm liking this. This out of DOD Christina. Like, this is the Christina I've been waiting to see. I'm loving it. She wasn't having it. She got right up off that couch and went right to the nurse's ball and told Shiloh, you better get away from Sam. <laughs> Christina wasn't having it. Um, speaking of, I love the scene where Shiloh and Sam went over to uh, Lulu, Maxie, and Peter's table. Look, Maxie was reading him for filth. Like, Maxie was not here for Shiloh at all. And I knew she wasn't because if you watch the Friday episode and you've seen him on the red carpet then you know Maxie wasn't feeling Shiloh from the second she met him. Um, and you want to know what this remind me of? Peter Harrell. Um, Peter Harrell, the dude. Remember when Maxie came back from that little journey that she was on after she had miscarried Lulu and Dante's baby and she lost custody of Georgie? And that's when Nathan first appeared and she went out of town and she came back with Peter. He was kind of like a cult dude, too, though, like trying to control her and, you know, isolate her from people. That's exactly what Shiloh was like, but a little less eccentric than Peter, because Peter was definitely eccentric and crazy. Um, so Maxie definitely read him. Maxie could read him from a million miles away. She read him like a book. She knew what he was all about and she was not having it. She was sitting there. And it's kind of funny how Maxie can't tell, like, because you you would think that Maxie would know Sam, be, you know, well enough to know that she would never date a cult leader or a dude like this. But Maxie didn't know what to think. So I like how Maxie was on the defensive. Like, she was like, OK, no, this ain't going to work. I'm not feeling this. Um, you're a cult leader. <laughs> she was just calling them out. And Sam sitting there talking about, oh, well, Maxie, I don't judge you for the company that you keep. OK, I get it. You know, throwing little shots at Peter and stuff. I told listen, Sam was well within her rights to say that because, I mean, you know, Peter did do his stuff. But I would take Peter over Shiloh. I'm just saying that's just me. I'm not feeling Maxie and Peter together, but I would take him over Shiloh. At least he's not trying to control Maxie and he's actually changing for the better. And, you know, he's not trying to follow in his daddy little footsteps. You know, like he's not doing none of that. You're dating this, you know, cat or whatever. Well, trying to pretend date. But the problem with Sam is this whole pretend being a part of DOD stuff. It feels like it's real to me with her. You know what I'm saying? Because, I mean, unless she's that good of a con where she can make you like really believe she's a part of this. But some of her expressions sometimes just give off like she really feeling him in a way. <laughs> unless it's just sexual tension or sexual attraction. But I'm I'm happy Maxie told her, you know, like, let her know, like, what is you doing? Like, get away from him. Meanwhile, Sam and uh, Spinelli running around trying to bug the DOD house. This whole plan is just not going to work. I have a feeling it's not going to work. It's going to blow up in their face because what they're not thinking about, they're thinking that he's going to do the pledge and all that. Well, not the pledge, but he's going to do the initiation at the DOD house. They never thought about what if he decides to do the initiation somewhere else. You know what I'm saying? Like, they didn't think about that. They didn't have forethought with that because that is a possibility. That's something that they should have been ready for. Because think, you never know. Like, Sam, and this is what I've been saying for weeks now. Sam may think that she got in his mind and she's conning him. But who's to say Shiloh not conning her? Who's to say he, he don't know her game? Because like, like the old saying go, game recognized game. How we know he never peaked her game a long time ago. Because think about it, she was well against him at first. And then she did a 180 change real quick. So who's to say he's not peeping her like he ain't been watching her. He got followers everywhere. So who's to say ain't nobody peep her sneaking around with Jason at, at, during that time. I'm just saying, game recognized game.
And he probably peaked her game weeks ago. And she just don't even know it. She been thinking that she got him on the fish hook and she reeling him in. All the while, he probably reeling her in. And she don't even see it. But speaking of performances, though, I did love the performance with Chase. Chase's performance was amazing, I will say. That performance was gold. And it had me hyped and ready to dance. And the way that he got um, Willow on the stage and stuff like that. And they were dancing, having a good time. You can tell the actors are having an amazing time. I think the actors really do enjoy the nurse's ball. I think the actors really do. Because this is like one of the times of the year where they could just let loose, really like party and sing and dance and just be you know, drama free, you know what I mean? Like they just, you know, they don't have to do all these emotional scenes and stuff like that. So I I think they really do enjoy it. Um, And it was, I loved it because the look on Shiloh's face when he saw Willow up there dipping it and doing it and having a good time and him and, you know, you could tell the look on Shiloh's face. He was mad as hell. He was pissed. He tried to keep up a good look, but you could tell he was mad. You could see it all over his face. But I enjoyed it. Um, I did love the Jacks and Carly scenes, though. How they kept, you know, every half hour or whatever, they kept checking uh, um, Jocelyn, sending her text messages and stuff. You know, I like that. That's parents being parents. I liked it. Um, I did love the Alexis, Neil, and Jack scene. That scene was hilarious. Where, like, you know, Jax was sitting down and stuff like that. She was introducing Neil to him. She just kept being so awkward, like, and so, just babbling on and on. Jackson and Neil just kept looking at each other and looking at her. They was like, Jax was looking at her like, Alexis, I think I get where you're coming from. But she just kept babbling, talking about, oh, we're here, but we're not here together. I'm like, Alexis, he gets the point. Then she talking about, oh, he's not seeing me. Well, he's my doctor. He's treating me. Alexis, breathe, breathe. <laughs> like, she is so awkward. <laughs> Yo, that whole scene just had me laughing. Like, I'm like, Alexis is so freaking awkward, but it was funny. Um, you could tell though. Alexis need to stop playing and go ahead and get with Neil. She she need to stop playing. Cause you could tell you I could see the way Neil be looking at her. You could tell he a little interested. He trying to get him some of that yum yum. I'm just saying, you could tell. He trying to get that. He trying to get in that cookie jar. And she knows she want him to, too. She just trying to play. You know how Alexis do. Everybody know how Alexis is. She try to play hard to get with every new dude until they crack that code to that safe. And then they up in there. She that's that's her game. That's her M.O. She try to play hard to get. I was like, no, don't, don't play hard to get. I'm telling you now, when you play hard to get, sometimes you don't get got. <laughs> like, it's all right to play hard to get sometime. But you, you got to know when to stop that. Because dudes will move on. They move, will move on quick. You better stop all that hard to get. Because people who play too hard to get, you ain't going to get got. I'm telling you. We'll move right along. Miss one bus, next 15, the next one coming. You better stop playing them games. <laughs> like, Stop playing. See, that's the problem with Alexis. She don't know sometime when to stop. I'm like, you need to stop playing that little hard to get game. Like, I understand you are hard to get. But there is a time to, to, to stop that. Okay? Like, a dude only gonna work for it but for so long. You know what I mean? Like, stop that playing. Um. <laughs> but I love Alexis, though. I love her. Um, I did like the scene, though, with, um... Who was it? Cameron. He walked backstage, and it was a llama... <laughs> As soon as I saw that llama, I was like, ain't that Lucy Cole little llama? I was like, mm-hmm. And that's when um Felix came back there and was like, oh, I had to get Lucy Llama. Thank God you found. Lucy is crazy as a bed bug. I'm like, what is you doing with a llama? Like, Lucy is nuts, yo. She is so over the top. But I love it, though. But she's crazy. Like, what are you doing with a llama? I'm like, are you serious? Lucy is nuts. Um... <laughs> But um, I did love the scene, though, and I love how he was, you know, literally just talking to the llama and bonding with the llama. I'm like, OK, um, but I'm, I'm happy that he went over to Sonny and Carly's house to talk to Jocelyn. And I think he brought her that video because th- if I'm remembering correctly, Oscar had um, Cameron record a video 
to give to Jocelyn. So I'm guessing that's the video that Cam that Oscar recorded. Um, I really, you know, I respect the fact that Jocelyn didn't want to go because I, I totally understand it. It's too soon for her and she just didn't want to perform that song right now. But I think by watching this video that Oscar left her, it's going to definitely get her there to perform it. And I'm glad that, you know, Cameron went and, you know, gave her that that little boost of encouragement to come and do this. You know, Cause I think it would mean a lot to Oscar if she did. Um, and it's kind of like a tribute to him in a way, you know, like she's, you know, you know, how people when people pass away and you watch an award show and they do a tribute, you know, what I'm saying something like that. Um, so I think that's pretty cool. So anyway. I also love the way Finn and Sonny handled the situation with Mike because I knew Finn was going to see that ring at the nurse's ball. And of course he did. So I love how he handled it. You know, he went over, talked to Sonny and um, basically told Sonny that that's his ring. And, you know, I like the way that they handled it with Mike. They played along with him and told Mike basically that he bought a fake ring. But I love how um, Finn gave him the, the duplicate, like the copy ring that um, the little replacement ring that Robert had gave him. And he gave it to Mike to give to Yvonne. I like that. He They did it so smooth and now he got the real ring back. So I like how, how they did it so effortlessly and it was very smooth. Um, so anyway. Anna was still trying to, you know, talk to Robert and let him know that she's madly in love with Finn. She's always going to love Robert, but that, that ship has sailed. Robert was kind of speechless. He was like, he kind of looked a little confused. Like he at first know what she was talking about, but I think he kind of put it all together. Like, oh, she thought I was trying to get with her, <laughs> but that wasn't really his intention though. He wasn't really trying to get back with her. That wasn't the intention. I don't think, um, and even Finn came back there to talk to him and stuff like that and basically told him, like, oh, I'm going to propose to her. I'm going to be with her, yada, yada, yada. And Robert, like, he got this face like, OK, what, like, what are you telling me for? Um, I love the back and forth between Robert and Finn, like this little beef that they got. It's kind of funny, like the little not beef, but the banter. I like it. Um, and I love the scene when Lucy was introducing um, Anna. Because I told people this in my comments, I totally understand where people are coming from and that they want Robin to show up to the nurses ball. For me, you know, Robin was at the ball last year and I think the year before that. I don't expect Robin to show up to the ball every year because, you know, Kimberly McCullough, you know, her schedule and stuff like that. So I don't expect Robin to be there every year. Hopefully she's going to be there next year, though. So, I, you know, I would love to see her next year at the very least. I would have loved to see her at this year, though, but I know it's not possible every year for her to be there depending on what her schedule looked like. And I did love the scene. You know me, I always love the scenes with Mac and Robert talking and stuff like that. Felicia had me dying, though. The way that she keep bugging um, Anna about who she came to the ball with, that was hilarious. Like, she just kept getting on Anna nerves. Like, because she was like, so who'd you come to the ball with? Mac, uh, she said, you came with Robert or Finn. Anna just kept yelling. She's like, I came with Finn. I came with Finn. <laughs> Like Felicia would not leave her alone and Matt wouldn't leave Robert alone about it. Yeah, I love those scenes. Um, But I did love the, the speech that, you know, Anna gave and stuff like that, you know, about Robin and Stone. I loved it. It was a beautiful speech. And that scene when Robert told Finn that he better be good to Anna and then he smacked the ring out of his hand. So that way it landed on stage near Anna's feet. That was a smooth little move because Robert was basically trying to nudge Finn, like letting Finn know, like, this is your moment. Propose to her now. You know what I mean? Like, I love it. Um, it's becoming a little bit of a cliche, though, because Curtis did that last year when he proposed to um, Jordan on stage and stuff. You know, proposing in front of everybody. I'm like, you know, it's cute, but it's becoming a little bit too much of a cliche. So y'all need to chillax with all that. Um, you don't want to do it every year and wear it out. I'm just saying. But um, anyway... Um, I feel bad for Willow that, um, she got fired and stuff like that. But even Michael told her, like, she should try to private school. And Michael was even t talking about getting her some, you know, references from community leaders. Like he was going to help her get a new job, which I think is pretty dope of him. For me, I feel like I like the chemistry between Michael and Sasha. And I like the chemistry between him and Willow, but I do, I'm getting more into Willow and Chase though. 
for me. I'm getting more into them. Like I said, whatever pairing, I feel like they can't go wrong. But I don't know. I'm feeling all of them right now. I love the people that they're currently with. But if they were to swap or do whatever, I wouldn't be mad at it either. I don't know about Sasha and Chase, though. I don't know yet. If they would be good together, I don't know. But I, I'm really starting to dig him and Willow, especially after today. But I wouldn't be mad about her and Michael either. Um, Because they all look good together. And Nina's hoping that Sasha stay in town and stuff. You know, Michael gives her the reason to stay in town. Valentine hopes she get the hell out of town. Because <laughs> the more she stay in town, the more it's likely his secret to come out. Speaking of, where is Obrey? Why was Obrecht not at the nurses' ball performing this year? That's who I want to see my girl Obrecht. I've been missing her. I feel like they need to be doing more with Obrecht because Kathleen um, Gaddison, listen, that's a that's a talent right there. That is a talent. I love Obrecht. That is one talented character, actress. I'm feeling her. I wish that they would show her more. You know, she's such a great character and a great addition to the show. And I wish to see her at this year's Nurses Ball, though. Hopefully, because the ball isn't over. So hopefully we get to see her. Um, so anyway, hit the comment section. Let me know what y'all thought about this episode. I will see you all y'all later. Have a great day. Peace.